I, I called this graphing review. Really, this is how to interpret what the area under a graph means or what the slope of a graph means without having to memorize a bunch of different graphs. In Science 10, when they do that short unit on velocity and acceleration, a lot of you were foolish enough to memorize the slope of a distance time graph is velocity. The slope of a velocity time graph is acceleration. No one memorizes them. You can derive them. You can derive them. Uh, I could have stuck this lesson anywhere. In fact, I used to, Nick, when I first started teaching, do this in the very first unit of the year. Today, I'm going to show you, call them graphing tricks, whatever. Um, and after today, that means you've noticed in the big ultimate reviews, often there are questions that ask you to interpret a graph, to talk about what the slope of a graph or the area of a graph means. I haven't given you any of those on a test. Now, that will be fair game for the rest of the year. I'm okay giving you a graph and saying, tell me about it. Robbie drops his pencil in amazement. We're good to go. You ready? Um, video, a simple proof of conservation of energy. I'll bring that up later. If we have two quantities that behave in the following manner, they go through zero, zero. If x is zero, y is zero. And as x gets bigger, y gets bigger, we say they are, there's a fancy phrase, directly proportional. Screen still frozen? Screen still frozen. I thought I unfroze it. There we go. Directly proportional. Thanks, Julie. It's not like I don't do that all the time. Directly proportional. What do we mean by directly? Nothing else can change the equation. Proportional, when one goes up by, when one's twice as big, the other's twice as big. When one's three times as big. Uh, kinetic energy is not directly proportional because of the squared. Okay? Or we say y varies directly as x. There's a symbol for is proportional to. You may have seen this. We used to do this in math. It's not done, I don't think, in the current curriculum, we would write y is proportional to x. And yeah, it's a little fish symbol. That's the symbol for is proportional to. So we would write this, y is proportional to x. Or if we want to make it an equation, we would write y equals kx. Or if you're in math 10, you write y equals mx. Uh, b is 0, where k is called the constant of proportionality. You don't need to know these terms. And it ends up being the slope of the graph. Okay. In other words, if you see a graph that looks like this, it goes through 0, 0, and it could either have a positive slope or a negative slope. How would I have a negative slope and go through 0, 0? I take that back. Go through 0, 0 and has a positive slope. Uh, the slope of this graph is the constant of proportionality. Uh, let me give you an example. Force and acceleration. Um, what would the slope of this graph be? What fits in an equation where I have f equals something a? What would sit there? The slope of this graph would tell you the mass of the object if you actually had numbers and went rise over run. Or if I gave you a graph of force versus mass, the slope would tell you the acceleration. It would be A times M, but that's the same as M times A. So you can really be clever by recognizing where equations fit together and realizing that if we're talking about a slope, it's templated on y equals mx. Or, hey, example one from science 10, d equals vt. What's the slope of this graph? First of all, as a number, let's assume that this goes through 10 comma 5. I tried to make it go through 10 comma 5. So the slope of this, the rise would be 5. The run would be 10. Slope is rise over run. 5 over 10 as a decimal in your head is? That's not what I care about. What I care about is what does the slope mean? Now, I know the slope 
of a distance versus time graph is velocity. I've never bothered memorizing that. What I have memorized is what you've all learned in Math 10. Slope is what over what? Again, slope is what over what? Rise over run. I look at the rise units, meters. See it on the y-axis? I look at the run units, seconds, meters per second. What's that? Yeah. And I either look at the units and figure out that it's the velocity. Or if I can't figure it out from the units, I can often figure it out from the variables like we did in the previous one. If I had said Newton and meters per second squared, pro probably most of you aren't saying kilograms, but force over acceleration. Oh, kilograms. Mass. Mass. Because that's the equation. Uh, if we don't go through 0, 0, but still, as x gets bigger, y gets bigger, we say there is an indirect proportion or variation. We write y is proportional to some kind of constant or slope times x plus you need a y-intercept. It, it really is slope-intercept form written slightly differently. If you want to make it an, oh, sorry. I would not have the k there for proportional. I'd say it depends on that. And if I want to turn it into an equation, Simone, I have to find what m is. Let's go to slope-intercept form. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's pretend that this graph here goes through 6 comma 10 and 0 comma 3. There's our two points. What's the slope? Well, slope equals rise 3 to 6. What's the rise? 3. three. What's the run? So point three. Point three. what? Well, I can look at the units, and it would be meters per second per second. What is meters per second per second normally written as? Ah. This is 0.3 meters per second squared. What do I measure in meters per second squared? What's the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept as a number is 0, 0,3. But now that you know we're graphing velocity versus time, what's the y-intercept actually telling us as a physics concept? Bi. The velocity at time zero, which we have traditionally called Vi. Hey, here's our next question. What would the area under this graph be? What would this area be? Slope is what over what? Rise over run. Here's how I can figure out what the area means. Without memorizing a bunch of crap, I know that to find slope, I divide. To find any area, any area equation on Earth, you multiply. Now, it's not always length times width. This is a trapezoid, but you multiply. So if I want to figure out the area, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply <coughs> either the units or the variables together. I'll multiply the units. On the y-axis, we have meters per second times. On the x-axis, we have seconds. Oh, what happens to the s's? What are the units left behind? And then this is one of many reasons last year I yelled at you to memorize units, because it is worth memorizing units. I could now say, hey, what do I measure in meters? I don't need to memorize that. I can figure it out. And that's really the whole point of today's lesson. If I give you a graph you've never seen before, and I say, tell me the slope, divide the units or divide the variables. Divide the units if you can figure it out from there. If not, divide the variables. Go find an equation that has those in it. If I give you a graph and I say, tell me about the area, multiply the units, Drake. And if you can't figure it out, multiply the variables. We're just going to practice a couple more.
video visual riddle. I think I saw, showed you that one already. Let me pause for a second. So continuing on. Um, if as x gets bigger, y gets smaller, we say that y varies inversely as x. This is a terrible term. I blame mathematicians. It should say y varies reciprocally as x because you are learning in math that inverse is actually when you switch the x and y around and you get a new equation. That's an inverse. This is not an inverse in my mind as a math nerd. This is a reciprocal, which is when you go one divided by the number. I'm stuck with the notation and the terminology, but if you ask me if I was in charge of all math for one day, I would change that symbol, because right now that's the symbol for inverse, but that's the symbol for reciprocal. And if you don't think that gets a bit confusing, well, you guys are going to find that out in calculus quite a bit, especially those of you that are in calculus. Anyways, if you see a graph that looks like this, it's probably because y varies or is proportional to 1 over x, or as an equation, y equals k over x. Uh, here would be a good example. Anybody remember what uh, I stands for? Current. Current. What R stands for? So here's a question. What would the area underneath this graph be? I don't know. Well, area. Let's multiply the units. It would be amps times ohms. I have no idea what that is. Let's try multiplying the variables. It would be I times R. I've seen that somewhere back in Math 9. Does, any, does anyone remember what equals I times R? Robbie. Yep, Vought. Voltage. We call this Ohm's Law. We'll be looking at it later on this year. But my whole point is you don't need to memorize every graph under the sun. If it's an area, you'll almost always be able to puzzle it out by multiplying the units or the variables. If it's a slope, you'll be able to puzzle it out by dividing the units or the variables. Graphing tricks. Um, sometimes you'll get the good old parabola y varies directly as x squares. It's the good old parabola. Oh, in fact, kinetic energy is a good example of an equation with the, has a squared in it. So this would be Ke equals a half mv squared. Who's in calculus here? You're learning curves are more difficult to deal with. Lines are pretty simple. And so if you wanted to straighten this curve out, instead of graphing, uh, by the way, sorry, I keep meaning to fix this typo. Can you scribble out the squared there? Thank you. It's not acceleration, it's meters per second. If you wanted to straighten this out, instead of graphing kinetic energy versus velocity, you could graph kinetic energy versus velocity squared, which is kind of strange, but you can. If you straighten out and you graph, now can you put a squared on the meters because it's velocity squared, it would be meters squared per second squared, it'll give you a nice straight line. And because it's a straight line, now I can ask you, hey, what's the slope of this graph? Hmm. Well, my first thought would be trying to divide the units. I would say it's joules over meters squared per second squared. I have no idea what that is. My second strategy would be, let's try dividing the variables. I would say, OK, Ke over v squared. Hey, I have an equation that has both of those in it. What's the equation that has Ke and v squared in it? Ke equals a half mv squared. Let's make that equation look like the slope. How? Let's divide the v squared over. What is the slope of a Ke versus v squared graph telling us what's left on the right-hand side? It tells you half the mass. So if you found the slope, uh, this was a question one year on the provincial. They gave kids this graph with numbers, and then they said, how much does, what's the mass of the object? And kids freaked. 
clever kids did the slope thing and said, oh, that's the mass, got it wrong. Really clever kids did the slope thing and said, ha, that's only half the mass. I now have to double it, and that's the actual mass. There, in fact, I might have put that question in your big review package. I can't remember. I think it's in there somewhere where they give you a KE versus V squared graph, and they say, what's the slope? So what is the slope? The slope is 0.5 m, half the mass. On the provincial, you know what? I need to remove that as well. There's no more provincial. So the provincial exam, the last question was, second last question was always interpret a graph. You know what? On your final exam, I'm going to ask you to interpret a graph on one of the written questions, last question or second last question. And during the year now, every so often as a written question, I may ask you to interpret a graph and then tell me to do something with it. I'll even give you a blatant hint. There's going to be a graph on your work energy test. Probably a force versus distance graph, but maybe not. Because that was also a definition, another way to calculate work. I think it was the area, which makes sense because the area would be force times distance to find the area you multiply the variables. Of course, that works. So to figure out what quantity is represented by slope, you simply divide the units or the variables. To figure out what quantity is represented by the area, simply multiply the units of or the variables. Either or. Okay. Put your pencils down, look up. 